G'day guys, this is Tier, and welcome back to another Fallout 76 build video. This one is going to be an in-depth coverage of my bloodied heavy gunner pair armor build, which I've aptly named the Dreadnought. If you'd like to skip ahead at all to all of the parts of the video that matter most to you, then the timestamps will be in the description and on screen right now for your convenience. Additionally, the link to the Nukes and Dragons build planner for this particular build will also be in the description if you would like to see the written version of this build. Also, friendly reminder that this build could be one of your many builds thanks to the new perk loadout machine as you can see right here. I will be making a full health variation of this build in the future, as well as a build specifically designed to min-max with the pepper shaker and a different variation that can utilize explosives to their fullest potential. So be on the lookout for those in the future. All those builds and more can be found in my builds playlist in the description. And as always with my new builds, I have taken the liberty of designating their strengths and weaknesses into a star rating rank system so that you can see if this is something that you want to work towards for yourself as you can see on screen. Anyways, this is the ultimate power armor wearing heavy gun using build. You will feel like you have accidentally stepped into a god mode glitch whilst using this build. You will feel like you've somehow downloaded some third party hacks that made you indestructible. Honestly, it should be illegal to be as tanky as we are with this build. Basically, this build is the absolute ultimate powerhouse in the game. The Dreadnought Heavy Gunner is the tankiest build you can possibly even think about creating in this game. There is no equal to this build when it comes to raw firepower and tanking mitigation. The Dreadnought excels in all of those areas, which is lucky for us because the entire goal and min-max objective for this build is to be as tanky as humanly possible. We want to be able to laugh in the face of our enemies as they desperately attempt to even scratch away at the paint of our power armor. I give you my absolute guarantee that if you follow this build to the absolute letter, you will practically be unkillable in every single PvE circumstance in the game. However, PvP is a different story, so don't go taking this build into PvP expecting to be some sort of god there. Now, we are basically going to be playing the role of designated tank when we are in the wasteland, the benefits of this build include being able to brush off any attacks from any enemy and boss in the game and then dish out some serious punishment of your own right back at them. It's a wild world for sure. Anyways, without further ado, let's jump into the special points for this build. So for this build, you do not need to make use of any legendary special cards. Pretty much everything we need is readily available with the default amount of special points we are given once we reach level 50. However, I have fully maxed out Legendary Strength so that I can have a little bit more wiggle room with some perks on the build, which do have very specific uses. Anyways, if you want to make this build for yourself, you will need the following base special points. 10 Strength, 1 Perception, 5 Endurance, 7 Charisma, 14 Intelligence, 8 Agility, and 11 Luck. This is what you'll need as a starting point in terms of your base special stats if you want to make this build for yourself. And as I mentioned earlier, I have made use of one fully ranked up Legendary Special card in this build, that being Legendary Strength. You can choose not to use Legendary Strength if you wish, as you can make full use of this build without it, but you will miss out on a few perk cards which I'll explain later on when we get to that section of the video. Anyways, if we take the Legendary Perk card into consideration, then our Strength gets raised to 15, while everything else remains the same. But then when everything is said and done and we have our mutations in place and our legendary special perk card ranked up, once everything is situated, then our special point stats will be the following. We will have 12 strength, 1 perception, 5 endurance, 7 charisma, 10 intelligence, 12 agility, and 11 luck. This is what our special stats should be looking like once everything is said and done, as I've said. Since we are using certain mutations, some stats will be slightly lowered, and since we are using power armor, we cannot make use of unyielding to compensate. But I promise you, while the build doesn't seem that oppressive at the moment due to the special stats, when compared to some of my other builds, but trust me, this is perfect and will set us up for the acquisition of the exact perks we will need to make us an unstoppable powerhouse. And also quickly, while this build's goal is to primarily be a tank, you may notice throughout this video that our endurance is a little bit low and our health pool point count is not that high of a priority. This is because our health doesn't actually matter on this build. We have reached a point where we are negating and reducing so much of the enemy's incoming damage that we could be running around with 5 hit points and it still wouldn't matter. We still wouldn't die. This is because a good majority of the enemies in this game don't deal enough damage to apply more than 1 or 2 points of damage to us when we are fully situated. So yeah, this is the levels I'm working with here. 
We are so tanky that it literally does not matter how many hit points we have. But if this does worry you, by all means feel free to change this build around and get higher health. I promise you, it does not matter though. Anyways, that's going to bring me to the perks that this build uses. These are the most important aspect of every single build in the game. If you don't run the correct perks, then you're just going to be setting yourself up for failure. The min-max goal here is to make ourselves simultaneously deal the most damage we possibly can with our bloodied heavy weapons, and then also to min-max towards being as unkillable and tanky as we possibly can. If you follow this setup, you will become one of the most powerful human beings to set foot onto Appalachia. Let's get into it. So this is the build in its constant and finished form. If you want to take a screenshot right now, feel free to. But yeah, we are an absolute fucking monster with this build and I'm going to go through each and every single perk card and explain why I have chosen them. Let's get into it. So firstly in the strength tree, we're going to be picking up all three ranks of the heavy gunner perk card, master, expert and regular. Taking all of these will give our regular heavy guns 60% extra damage, which is fucking awesome. All the damage we can get, we will take. Then next we're going to be taking max rank of blocker. When we have this perk on, we take 45% less damage from our opponent's melee attacks, basically making us invincible when it comes to uh, resisting melee opponents. If it's very useful, you should definitely pick this up. And then I've filled up the final three points with a combination of max rank of bandolier and lock and load rank 1. So bandolier is maxed out, obviously. We have a lot, and I mean a lot, a lot of ammo on our heavy gunner. So making all of its weight reduced by 90% is monumentally helpful, especially since we don't have unyielding to bolster our strength, so we don't have that much carry capacity to begin with on this pair armor build. And then the final point is with lock and load, we reload our heavy guns 10% faster, helps us get back into the fight a little bit quicker, helps us reload those heavy guns just a little bit faster, which is nice. And then over in Perception, this is our dump stat. It doesn't matter what we put here, we don't care. You can have rank 1 Concentrated Fire. You can have rank 1 of the Refractor perk card, whatever you want. Doesn't fucking matter, it's Perception. We only use it just because we have to. So next up is Endurance. We have taken max rank of Fireproof. This makes us take 45% less damage from explosions and flame attacks. Very, very useful in a lot of situations, including when we might accidentally shoot ourselves with our explosive weapons. But yeah, I like to put Fireproof on all of my builds because it's just so valuable. Taking 45% less damage from explosions is a pretty big deal. And then next we will be taking Max Rank of Rejuvenated. This is very, very nice. It pairs very nicely with our Overeater's Armor. And since we want to be at full hunger and full thirst at all times, we might as well get some bonuses out of it. So, we get a lot more health and we get a lot of AP regeneration due to Rejuvenated. We get a plus one to Strength and a plus one to Endurance as well, which is very nice. So we can't really pass this up. Very useful for this build and there's a little bit of synergization there. Over for Charisma, we have Rank 1 of Strange in Numbers. Obviously, we're going to pick this up. It makes our mutations 25% stronger if our teammates are mutated as well. It makes all of our mutations more useful, which is always welcomed. We're going to be resisting a lot more stuff with this. We're going to be doing a little bit more damage. And then we have rank 3 of Suppressor. This is very useful for a tank build. Everything we shoot will do 30% less damage for 2 seconds after we attack it. Very, very useful if we're shooting at a boss or just an enemy that deals a lot of damage. If that enemy isn't even attacking us, we will be reducing its damage output by 30%, which just helps the entire server, the entire event, whoever's around you. It's very helpful not only to yourself, but your teammates. And then similarly, we have Tenderizer. Taking this will make us do 10% more damage for 10 seconds after we attack an enemy. So basically, whatever we shoot, we'll take 10% more damage. That's going to help us min-max our damage potential to the absolute limit, which is always nice to have. Moving on to Intelligence, we have Nerd Rage. What bloodied build doesn't have Nerd Rage? None of them, because it would be bloody stupid to have a bloodied build without Nerd Rage. Anyway, while we are below 20% health, we gain 40 damage resistance, 20% extra damage, and 15% faster AP regeneration. It helps synergize with our entire goal here, being low health. Next up we have Stabilized. Now this is one of the reasons why we must be in pair armor. It is such a big bonus to have armor penetration. You guys have no idea how important armor penetration is. If you're using a heavy gunner build and you're not in pair armor, you are missing out on this and a lot of other stuff as well, which I'll get into later, but mainly this, okay? 45% armor penetration and excellent accuracy. You can't pass this up, man. The extra armor penetration will help you in all of your fights, whether that be against the bosses like Earl Williams or a simple feral ghoul. And then we have max rank of demolition expert. Taking this will make our explosives do 60% extra damage, which is fucking amazing. So we use this for two reasons. 
Number one, majority of my weapons have the explosive legendary prefix, so this just makes them do an extra bit of damage, which is always welcomed, it helps min-max my damage output, but also if I ever want to switch to weapons like the Fat Man, the Missile Launcher, or the Auto Grenade Launcher, stuff like that, then this will help me min-max my damage with those as well. It's a little bit of a duality perk, which I like to see. And then next up, we have batteries included. You basically can't have a efficient power armor build without this because you have to lug around so many fusion cores to power your power armor. So having that all weigh 90% less definitely helps you function correctly as a power armored individual. Personally, if I could get rid of this perk for something else, I would. I would put first aid in here or something like that to help me heal up a little bit more, but I just can't sacrifice batteries included because of the absurd weight of all of the fusion cores and plasma cores that I use. Then over to agility, we have max rank of adrenaline. At max rank, we gain 10% extra damage for everything we kill, maxing out at 60% extra damage. This will last for 30 seconds and will refresh every time we get a kill. Very nice. Basically, if you're in a swarm of enemies, it's an extra 60% damage. Then next up, we have dodgy. This perk is one of the best perks out there that actually work in power armor when it comes to tanking. As you probably noticed, a lot of the tanking perks don't actually work in power armor. Things like barbarian or maybe evasive, all those sort of damage resistant perks don't work in power armor, unfortunately, but this one does. Basically, you're going to avoid 30% of incoming damage at the cost of 30 action points per hit. And it does have a slight cooldown, which makes this very usable. Basically, with this perk on, you're going to be a lot more tanky, so we're going to pick this up. Then over onto luck, we're going to pick up Bloodied Mess. At max rank, this is going to give us 15% bonus damage to all of our weapons, and creatures we kill will explode in a gory red paste, which is always nice to see. Now, you could make the argument that these three points right here could be better spent elsewhere. However, I disagree because extra damage is extra damage. No matter how small it may be, I'm going to pick that up every single time. In contrast, you may not think the same way I do and might find value in some other perks, but for me, I think Bloody Mess is the way to go. Then next up, we're going to be picking One Gun Army. This perk is really good for heavy gun users. With this perk on and fully maxed up, all of their heavy guns gain a 12% chance to stagger and a 12% chance to cripple a limb. Now this is huge, especially when we are using a automatic heavy gun like a minigun or an explosive LMG, explosive 50 cal, anything like that. Basically at some point in between the next few seconds of you shooting an enemy, you're going to stagger it and you're going to cripple whatever part of it you're aiming at. In addition to that, it's also very useful for situations like when you're at the Scorch Beast Queen. If you want to target its wings or any other Scorch Beast's wings, then you can force it to land if you cripple it. It's very useful and it helps out the entire group at the event. Then next up we're going to be taking Ricochet. This perk right here is amazing. A lot of people underestimate it. I do have a video going in depth about why it's so good if you want to check that out. But basically, you gain an 18% chance to deflect back some of your enemy's range damage. What this means is, you've got an 18% chance to take no damage from incoming projectiles. Okay, this only works with ranged weapons, but like I said, it's an 18% chance to just take no damage when you're getting shot at. This bolsters our tanking potential and our damage mitigation so much. Just having a chance to take no damage is so immensely valuable. You should definitely work this into your build if you haven't already. And on top of that, if you're holding a vampire's weapon, all of your reflected bullets will heal you as well, which is a very nice addition. And then finally, we have starch genes. This is needed on every single build. We need it to keep our chosen mutations, which I'll get into in a little bit. So there you go ladies and gentlemen, if you follow this build guide you will have set yourself up perfectly and placed yourself in a great position to become a terrifically effective heavy gunner. Now I'm going to show you that there are some opportunities for slight variation here if you wish to use some different perks under different circumstances. Firstly, you're more than welcome to slot in the perk card called lock and load instead of blocker if you wish to. However, I personally found that tanking melee hits was way more important than reloading a little bit faster with certain guns. Next up, you can switch in and out Lone Wanderer for Stranger Numbers and Suppressor, depending on if you are in a team or going solo. However, with this build, I highly recommend that you run in a team and act as the tank of the group. Additionally, if you want to, you can just take one point from Strength and put it into Perception to give yourself max rank of Grenadier if you want to have that active. However, I did not think that it was worth it for this build in particular. I will be doing a build primarily dedicated to Explosives in the future. Then finally, depending on if you're using weapons with the explosive effect or not, you can switch between Demolition Expert 5 and Gunsmith 5. 
or you could utilize those 5 points elsewhere in the build if you do not wish to use either of those perks. Anyways, that's going to bring us to the legendary perk cards, so let's get into that. And now this brings me to the portion of the video where I talk about legendary perk cards. These are them right here if you want to slow down and pause to see them all. Anyways, I'm going to explain each one individually and why I've chosen them. Now, far-flung fireworks. Like I said in my commando build video, I understand why people don't like it. I understand the reasons. Sometimes it flings bodies away. Sometimes it gets in the way and you can't see stuff. I get it. However, look at it from this point of view. Our objective is to deal as much damage as possible. Now at max rank, this is a 20% chance to make an enemy explode and deal 150 area damage to everything around it. Which may not seem like much, but it is very, very powerful, especially when you factor in how much hurt we can push out with our fully automatic explosive heavy weapons. You're going to be seeing chain reactions coming left, right and center, everyone just far flung firework exploding everywhere all over the map. It's very nice to see and it deals a lot of damage. And then next up we have Power Armor Reboot. The point of this build is to be as tanky as possible. So, we already have a very, very, very slim chance of dying. But then if you throw this into the mix, <laughs> it starts to become a little bit stupid and ridiculous. Just the amount of things that are keeping us alive, it's nuts. Basically, every time you do die, there's a 40% chance that you just don't die. <laughs> you get revived by yourself. It's amazing and it only works in power armor as it says right there. Basically, if something goes wrong, if you kill yourself, then there's a 40% chance of that mistake not mattering and you just don't die. Well worth it for this build since our objective is to stay alive. And then we have taking one for the team. Now this perk is amazing for this build. This build in particular benefits so much from this perk. Because we are a tank. Our goal is to be getting shot at by all of the enemies because we can take it. We can take the hits. So everything that shoots us is going to be taking 40% more damage, which is very helpful for not only ourselves, but for our teammates because it counts for them as well. At max rank, every time something attacks you, shoots you, hits you, bites you, spits acid at you, whatever the case may be, they will be taking 40% more damage. Like I said, this synergizes so well with our build. And then in a similar vein to Power Armor Reboot, we have Electrical Absorption. Now this perk is just Fucking ridiculous, okay? At max rank, you have a 20% chance that energy attacks from laser weapons, plasma weapons, Teslas, stuff like that, you have a 20% chance that those energy attacks will recharge your power armor's fusion core. Which might not sound ridiculous, and it's not. But that's because the ridiculous part comes from the hidden benefit of this perk. Now, when this perk procs, it also heals you. So basically, it's a 20% chance that energy attacks will recharge your fusion core in your power armor, and also replenish your hit points. Now some people think this is a glitch or unintentional. I'm here to tell you that it's not. This was intended. This perk was always supposed to work this way. The devs have confirmed that. So this is not changing anytime soon. No need to fret. Essentially, this perk just makes you unkillable when you are facing enemies with laser beam weaponry or plasma weaponry, stuff like that. Instead of hurting you, they're going to be healing you when this perk procs. Kind of ridiculous and overpowered at this point, but hey. I'm not going to complain. Next up we have Funky Duds. So basically as a bloody build, our one kryptonite is always poison damage. That thing creeps up on you and it can fuck you over if you're not paying attention. And that reality is no different for this build. Even though we are in power armor and we're tanking a lot of damage with all of our percentage based buffs and stuff like that, poison damage can still sneak up on you, which is why I've still chosen to pop in Funky Duds. Even at rank 1 here, you will negate pretty much every bit of poison damage that comes at your way. But if you want to go full overkill, feel free to rank it up fully and just take absolutely no poison damage whatsoever. And then we have Legendary Strength. So I've put this in for a few reasons. Number 1, it lets me slot in a few perks that I was honestly missing and I wish that I could put in, so it lets me do that job. Those perks are Rejuvenated and Suppressor. So basically what I've done is I've lowered my base strength by 5, to account for this. So that's going to give me extra 5 points, bringing me back up to 15. And then I took those 5 points from Strength, and put 2 of them in Endurance, and 3 of them in Charisma. And that is what has allowed me to pick up Rejuvenated and Suppressor right here on top of everything else in my build. Now I could have done this a few ways, I could have gotten Legendary Intelligence and just lowered Intelligence by 5 points and done the same thing. I could have done that with Agility or Luck, but I opted to do with Strength because, hey, it's a power armor build and I'm fucking strong. <laughs> But yes, those are my legendary perk cards. I hope you enjoy using them. 
So yes, those were my legendary perks and why I have decided to use them. Honestly, I wish that we had some more creative options here, but sadly we do not. Anyway, let's move on to mutations. Okay, so let's go over each and every mutation this build uses and explain why we use them. As you may have noticed, I did not pick up Class Freak for this build, and I'll say why in every single build video I make. That perk is pointless because the mutations we pick up do not actually negatively affect the build. We have only chosen mutations that specifically work for our min-max goals here. So yes, Class Freak is a waste of 3 points in my eyes, and I will always stand by that comment. That you should not use it in your builds, simply because you should only be picking the mutations that apply to your build. Also, keep in mind that all of these mutations will be 25% stronger while we are on a team thanks to Stranger Numbers, which is brilliant. Anyways, let's get into it. First up, we have Adrenal Reaction. Surprise, surprise, this is a bloody build after all, so of course we are going to synergize that here with this mutation. Adrenal Reaction grants us up to 50% extra damage at low health and makes our Stimpaks slightly more effective while we are at low health. And don't worry about the negative 50 to health, if having a high hit point count mattered with this build, then I would have made that a priority. But obviously it is not, like I said earlier. Next up we have Marsupial. This perk is amazing as you all know. Being able to gain the high ground on your enemies brings an untold amount of combat advantages. Also, being able to hold an extra 20 pounds of carry capacity is very welcomed. Then we have Bird Bones. Now ideally I would not use this mutation as it does not really benefit us in any combat scenario. We can't sneak in power armor so the extra agility doesn't really matter, and the reduction to strength doesn't matter either since the power armor will equalize that out. The reason I use this mutation is because without it, because of Marsupial, every time we jump we will do that stupid god awful superhero landing animation. So unfortunately, if you're in power armor and using Marsupial, you need to pair it with bird bones just for the slower fall speed so that we can remove that landing animation altogether. Next up is Carnival. Now this is optional for this build as there are not really any food buffs that we can take to bolster any min-max potential. There are some foods that give you bonus damage resistance or energy resistance, but they aren't worth farming or using in this case, as I'll get to later. So just go with what you want here, be that herbivore or carnivore. I've chosen carnivore because it allows me to quickly and easily replenish my hunger from the raw meat of the enemies I kill in combat. Because yes, we will be wanting to keep our hunger and thirst fully satiated for this build. I'll get to that in the armor section. Anyways, next up is Plague Walker. We are taking this because if we ever do happen to get a disease, then that will be great for us to use. We will be able to use that with this mutation as a small AoE attack to slowly deal little bits of damage to enemies that are close to us. Which might not sound that good, but if you're getting swarmed by a lot of enemies, as the tank it's nice to just be constantly dealing damage to a lot of enemies that are near you. And then finally we have Scaly Skin. This will bolster our damage resistance and energy resistance by 50 to make us just a little bit tankier, which is nice. And don't worry about the negative to action points, we are using pair armor and dodgy after all, so our AP is of no concern. Now you might have noticed I'm not using Speed Demon here on this build anymore, and the reason why is very important. We are ideally going to be using Overeater's pair armor, which requires us to be at full hunger and thirst levels for it to protect us. And Speed Demon depletes your hunger and thirst levels 50% faster, which is obviously not good. Now don't worry, we do make up for the loss in movement speed with emergency protocols, which will bring us up to maximum movement speed, and we are using Lock and Load for the reload speed, so nothing of value is actually lost. Now as always, these are just the mutations I recommend for this build to complement the playstyle and objective as much as possible. You're always free to add or remove certain mutations based on your own needs or preferences. Anyways, onto the topic of weapons. Obviously, we are a heavy guns user, and there really are no bad options for base weaponry. However, I do have my preferences. For ballistic weapons, I have 50 cal machine guns, LMGs, gas miniguns, and Gatling guns. These will all treat you perfectly and provide enough base damage to mow down any target that you come across. Then, for the energy weapon fanatics, ideally you will want to be aiming for Gatling plasmas, Gatling lasers, or flamers. These weapons will provide you with terrific DPS and very high ammo capacity and reliability for crafting ammo. And if you are feeling particularly adventurous, going with off-meta weapons with stuff like the missile launcher, Batman or harpoon guns will treat you particularly well as well. Like I said, there's no real bad options here. And then in terms of legendary weapon effects, we will obviously want to be aiming for bloodied as the primary prefix. 
This will provide the highest damage per shot against almost all of the enemies in the wasteland. While you are below 5% health, it will max out and grant you 95% extra damage. However, anti-armor is another viable option when you are facing off against heavily armored enemies like bosses. In that situation, anti-armor will out-damage bloodied majority of the time when you're against those enemies. As for the second star, you will want to be aiming for either the explosives effect or the 25% faster fire rate effect. It really depends on your preference and your weapon of choice. The explosive effect will deal 20% explosive damage in a small localized AOE attack, while faster fire rate will just improve your overall DPS by a huge margin. Then for the third star, ideally you will want to either aim for 15% faster reload speed or the 90% reduced weight effect. Personally, I prefer the reduced weight effect so that I can collect and carry as many heavy weapons as I want without a worry in the world, as you can clearly see here. However, the faster reload effect will be more combat effective. Reloading faster means you can re-enter the battle faster and start belching lead again. Now before moving on, I would also like to mention the immense value having a vampire's secondary weapon holds, especially for this build. Get yourself a vampire's explosive heavy weapon as a sidearm and you'll be giving yourself so much goddamn health regeneration on top of your sheer damage mitigation that it's not even funny. It's actually disgusting how tanky you can become, especially with a vampire's weapon in your hand. So yes, any combination of the legendary effects of any of the weapons that I just stated will be ideal for this build and make you an unstoppable force on the battlefield. And now there are two things that I do need to touch on, legacies and vats. Firstly, legacies. You don't need any legacies to be obscenely powerful in this build. You can wipe out every single regular enemy in the game insanely fast without them. So, they are not needed, which is why I have not been showing them in the video all that much. Also, try to keep in mind that one day they may be corrected and function correctly. It might not be today, it might not be this month, or even this year, but one day it will happen and they will be fixed. So if you rely on those weapons then, you're going to be screwed. And as for VATs, all heavy guns in this game were purposefully built by the developers to be inefficient in VATs. With two exceptions of course the Gatling Gun and Plasma Caster. These two slow firing heavy weapons are the only ones that can be used in VATs with some margin of success. However, even then it's almost not worth doing in comparison to a Commando or a Rifleman. So with that said, this is why we have no focus on VATs in this build. Now let's talk about the weapon mods. If you have the ability to, you should prime all of your heavy weapons for two reasons. Number one, extra damage. Number two, ammo efficiency. Basically, you are able to craft Prime Ultra Sight Ammo in larger quantities, which is very important for a heavy gunner, since we go through so much fucking ammo on this build, it's ridiculous. The other mods on your heavy weapons are inconsequential, and it usually doesn't matter what you pick. Go for what gives you the biggest ammo capacity and the highest damage, and you'll be right as rain. And finally, I understand that all of this can be a little bit daunting, especially for the new players. I just want to say that you don't need all these god roll weapons to be using this build efficiently. You can make do just fine with even a 1 star bloodied heavy weapon. The point I'm trying to make as always is that you shouldn't worry too much about getting those god roll weapons, although if you do want to give yourself the maximum damage potential, they are needed. Just use what you have at your disposal while you work towards the god rolls and you'll be fine. Anyways, let's talk about the armor section. Oh yes, this is the part of the build that ties it all together. This is where we start to feel like we have stolen a fragment of god mode. Firstly and obviously, we will be using pair armor. Pair armor by default grants you a 42% damage reduction effect against all incoming damage and a 90% radiation reduction negation effect, which is very powerful in its own right. Personally, I never step out of my pair armor in this build ever, so no regular armor will be suggested for this build because you should also never be stepping out of your pair armor. Anyways, for the models and base pair armor, if you want to be as tanky as you possibly can and push yourself to the absolute limits overall, then T65 pair armor will be your best option. This pair armor is quite hard to obtain and expensive, so if you want an easier alternative that isn't as tanky overall, then I recommend going with Hellcat pair armor. Hellcat is great at defending you against ranged ballistic attacks, but not much else in comparison to the other pair armor. Basically, Hellcat is the best in the game when it comes to defense against ranged ballistics, but it is not the best when it comes to defense against energy weapons, melee, or anything else like that, so T65 will be the best option when it comes to overall defense. 
Anyway, basically, end game Parama would be T65 and the beginner would be Hellcat if your goal is tankiness. However, there is another option. If you want to deal a slightly higher amount of damage via a poisonous effect, then Strangler Heart will be your go-to power armor. This PA applies a moderate amount of poison damage over time to all of your armed attacks. Anyways, once you have made your choice with the power armor model that you want to go for, then comes the hard part, getting the legendary rolls you want on your power armor. Honestly, there is no better alternative overall for PvE content than what I'm about to suggest. You should 100% aim for this on your power armor. For the first star prefix, you should aim for the Overeaters legendary effect. This effect is monstrously strong. With a full set of Overeaters, you will gain 30% damage reduction against all incoming damage so long as you keep your hunger and thirst levels topped off. There is no better option here for overall defense against everything. And then for the second star effect, we will ideally want to be aiming for the Sentinels effect. This grants us a 75% chance to reduce incoming damage by 15% while we are standing still per piece. And if we get a full set, then we will gain an extra 75% damage reduction to add onto our already freakishly strong build. As for the third star, we will want to ideally aim for either faster AP refresh speed or the hardy effect. Depending on your choice, regenerating AP faster while in Parama feels so alien-like and will be very useful. While the Hardy effect will make you negate incoming explosive damage by 7% per piece, which can be very useful in certain situations to make you even tankier. Now obviously it's next to impossible to get these exact rolls on your power armor, which is why I strongly recommend that you try to make trades either via Reddit, Discord or Facebook and try to either build a set slowly over time or get a full set in an instant via trades. As you can see here, that is what I've done. I have traded a lot of legacy weapons for this set of armor, and I've got to say, it was well worth it. Unfortunately, the pair armor I have is Ultrasight instead of the armor I recommended to you guys. With that said though, I am still going to be rolling my T65 and Strangler Heart pair armor every single day until I get my desired legendary effects. Next up is Backpacks and Under Armor. I'll make it simple here, you don't need them for this build. Obviously backpacks and under armor effects aren't active while you're in power armor. Just use whatever you want if you want to have under armor, if you want to have a backpack for when you're hopping out of your power armor. Do what you want. As for power armor mods, for this build, you need to put emergency protocols on your torso. This is the most powerful torso modification for a bloodied low health power armor build. While you are below 20% health, emergency protocols will make you take 50% less damage from all incoming sources as well as make you run at maximum movement speed, which is just so strong and powerful it's fucking ridiculous. As for leg modifications, I recommend using calibrated shocks. This will increase your carry capacity by 100 if you have it on both legs, and is honestly a godsend. Very useful for inventory management. The helmet mods are subjective, as some power armor helmets don't allow all mods. So if you're able to, I recommend putting on targeting HUD so that all enemies will glow bright red, making them easier to spot, if you can't do this, then increased perception is likely your only option, so go for that. As for the arms, nothing here benefits us in the slightest since all arm mods are melee orientated. So pick whatever. So yeah, that's the armor covered. Getting the right power armor model with the right legendary effects and mods will literally make you an immovable object and unkillable. There will be nothing in this game that can harm you. And as I mentioned earlier, don't stress too much about it all. Yeah, the flashy legendary effects are nice and all and make you powerful, but you can play this build and be just as viably tanky with any type of power armor, even if it's non-legendary. Simply using something as bad as Raider power armor will still allow you to be very tanky. Just ensure that you get the emergency protocols onto your armor. That part is important. So yeah, like I said, make do with what you have and just enjoy the process. If you need to start out with Raider Armor and work your way up to T65 or Strangler Hut while you get enough gold bullion to purchase those armors, then enjoy the process like I said. Alright, and just quickly guys, I wanted to put into perspective just how tanky this build really is with some numbers. So big thanks to Waster from the data mining community for actually pulling these numbers up and doing the math for me. Anyway, the difference is not that big if you are on a team or if you're solo. The damage mitigation difference between team and solo is as little as 1% as you can see right here. If we take everything that this build utilizes into account, that being damage resistance, explosive resistance, suppressor, emergency protocols, our native power armor defense effect, 
Hell, we even take into account the extra damage resistance we get from being on a team with Stranger Numbers. As you can see, it's just absolutely mind-boggling the amount of damage resistance and percentage-based damage negation this build has up its sleeve. And even right there at the bottom, you can see you have percentage-based things working in your favor as well to just make sure you don't take damage. That being Ricochet, Electrical Absorption, and Pair Armor Reboot, if you do happen to die, it's a 40% chance to not die, as I said earlier. So yeah, basically, this picture right here is showing you all of that, all the information you need to know with your tanking setup, whether you're solo, whether you're on a team. If you are wearing that complete set of T65 Pair Armor with Overeaters and Sentinel on it. For the remainder of this section, I've just got to say, this is fucking ridiculous. No wonder we can't die. No wonder we are mitigating so much fucking damage, even in daily ops, against all of the enemies like the Imposter Sheepscorch, the Earl Williams fight, Scorch Beast Queen. We just take no damage. It's honestly too overpowered, I reckon. I think Bethesda may nerf this in the future just because of how powerful it is. So, I hope I'm wrong. I hope they don't nerf it, but... If they do, make the most of it while you can, utilize this build and share it with your friends. With this build's complete setup, while you are solo, you will be negating 99.18% of all incoming damage. And while you are on a team, you will be negating 98.98% of all incoming damage. It's just absolutely ridiculous how tanky this build is, and as you can see, the difference between being on a team and not being on a team is very minimal, so don't stress about that. Just jump on a team, don't worry about Lone Wanderer, just jump on a team and make full use of your tanking role during events and daily ops. Now this brings us to the buff section of the video. Just in case you want to overclock your damage potential or maybe even gain a little extra damage resistance, here is the buff list for every heavy gunner. Firstly, let's look at our long lasting buffs. We can take the heavy guns bobblehead, which will give us 20% extra damage with our heavy weapons for one hour. Or, we can take the Explosive Bobblehead, which will increase only the Explosive Damage portion of our weapons by 30% for an hour. Then you can take the Guns and Bullets 7 magazine to do 10% more damage with all of your heavy weapons. Since none of them actually use a scope, this will count for all of them. Or alternatively, if you're using a Gatling Gun or Plasma Caster and you for whatever reason want to use VATS Criticals, then you may wish to use the Tesla Science 9 magazine that can make you deal 30% extra damage with your heavy gun criticals. Then as for the food buffs, same deal here with the Blight Soup. If you're using those weapons, then you can deal 20% extra critical damage. If you want to use that, go for it. You can also spam click canned coffee and sunshine oil in large quantities if you have them at your disposal to use virtually any heavy gun in vats, which is nice but very costly, so keep that in mind. And then we have a few food items that can grant higher resistances for your character. Basically take your pick. As for alcohol, we will be taking the Vintage Toxic Gin and Tonic, which will grant us 10% extra damage overall, which is very nice. And then finally, the chems. It's important that you take them in this order so that they stack. Firstly, take Overdrive for 15% extra damage and 15% extra VATS critical damage, and then pop your Psychotats for an extra 25% damage boost, as well as some damage resistance. Additionally, if you feel like it, you could be using Medex to grant yourself an extra 25% damage negation effect, which is pretty huge, so don't pass that one up, if your goal is to be very tanky. Now onto the topic of daily ops. Basically, you don't have to worry about a thing in here, no matter the game mode. Even if we do have the decryption game mode where the enemies cut through 99% of your armor, we will be fine. For the simple reason being, they can only cut through damage resistance and energy resistance. They cannot, however, cut through percentage-based defenses, which is why we are able to walk through the enemies in here like they are nothing. We just simply have so much percentage-based damage negation stacking on top of each other that we are basically unkillable even in daily ops, which brings me to my strategy. If you're using this build and you're in a daily ops team, you're the tank and you should play that role to its strengths. So try your best to do the mission objectives and also try to draw aggro from all the enemies so that your teammates are safe. Basically, I want you to be their unbreakable shield. You will excel in daily ops no matter the situation, so go nuts in there. As for boss battles, that's kind of a different story. While we do deal a very high amount of damage and we do have incredible DPS to all of the regular enemies in the game, you will notice that our damage is diminished quite a bit against Earl Williams and the Scorch Beast Queen. This is because those bosses are honestly just as tanky as we are. And unless you're using a legacy weapon, you're not going to be hitting damage numbers anywhere near the same level that a stealth commando or melee build can. 
and honestly, in my opinion, I think this is a good thing. This just reinforces you to play to your build's strengths during these events. You are a tank. Be everyone's unbreakable, undying shield. Draw aggro off the boss and off the adds so that they are all attacking you and focusing on you, so that the more DPS orientated builds like the commandos that are sitting around you can do their thing and put the hurt on the boss. Basically when you're on this build, I want you to think of it this way. You have such an incredible opportunity to fill such a useful role during these boss events. You can just brush off all the attacks from the bosses and enemies like they are nothing and just walk away completely unscathed. I recommend that you do all the damage you can to the boss and play this tank role to the fullest extent. In addition to acting like a straight up tank drawing aggro from enemies at the boss events like Scorch Beast Queen and Earl Williams events, there is another boss battle out there that doesn't get talked about too often, that being the Imposter Sheep Scorch event called Encrypted. Basically at this event you're going to be playing the same role, you are tank, you take the aggro from all the enemies, including the Imposter Sheep Scorch. In addition to that, you are just so goddamn tanky on this build, you should be the one to be running all three pylons if you can. If not, even running one will help out the team so freaking much at this event. Basically, you can take the hits on this build if you do it properly, so you might as well be the one to distract the boss, keep its aggro hold on you, and you might as well be the one to become the conduit at all three pylons. And then, as for mobbing, Oh man, you've got that covered. Don't stress about a thing guys, there is no mob in this game that can hurt you and there's nothing that you can't kill in a flash. Super Mutants, Ghouls, Yelgwise, Deathclaws, Scorch Beasts, even Sheep Squatch, they all get crushed by the weight of your heavy guns. So ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for me. This has been the ultimate bloodied heavy gunner pair armor build, the Dreadnought. Before I end the video, I want to reiterate some points quickly in case you somehow missed it. The entire purpose of this build is to min-max our tanking potential and damage mitigation. When everything is said and done, once you have the build, the perks, the armor and the mutations, you should be mitigating a good 98% of incoming damage or something along those lines, it's crazy high. So when I say we are tanky, I really mean it. But in addition to our undying nature, we also have the best damage potential a heavy gunner can possibly achieve. I really hope you guys enjoy the duality of this build and enjoy using it to its fullest strengths. Anyways guys, if you are building this for yourself and you need to return to the video for any reason, I strongly recommend that you do so and utilize timestamps to revisit any part of the video that you need. And as always, the build link will be in the description for you to utilize, as well as the playlist directing you to all of my other build videos. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed and if you did, be sure to drop a like, drop me a comment and if you're new here and want to see more content like this then make sure you're subscribed with push notifications turned on. A huge shout out to my channel members and Patreon supporters for making videos like this possible and a huge shout out to The Distinction 4 and Dr. Drozzo for being top donators. You're all legends and I appreciate you all. As always the links to my social media are in the description along with links to my Patreon and channel memberships if you want to support me in a much larger way. I've been Tia and I'll catch you in the next one. Welcome to Valhalla.